The Kingdom of the Subi, also called the Kingdom of Galaretia, was a Germanic post-Roman kingdom, one of the first ones to separate from the Roman Empire, based in the former Roman provinces of Galaretia and northern Lusitania. The de facto kingdom was established by the Subi about 410 and during the 6th century it became a formally declared kingdom identifying with Galatia. It maintained its independence until 585, when it was annexed by the Visigoths, and was turned into the 6th province of the Visigothic Kingdom of Hispania. Origins Little is known about the Suva who crossed the Rhine on the night of 31 December 406 AD and entered the Roman Empire. It is speculated that these Suva are the same group as the Quadi, who are mentioned in early writings as living north of the Middle Danube, in what is now Lower Austria and Western Slovakia, and who played an important part in the Germanic Wars of the 2nd century when together with the Marcomanni fought fiercely against the Romans commanded by Emperor Marcus Aurelius. The main reason behind the identification of the Suva and Quadi as the same group comes from a letter written by Saint Jerome to Adrusia, listing the invaders of the 406 crossing into Gaul, in which the Quadi are listed and the Suva are not. The argument for this theory, however, is based solely on the disappearance of mention of the Quadi and the emergence of the Suva, and contrast with the testimony of other contemporary authors, as Orosius who did cite indeed the Suva among the peoples traversing the Rhine in 406, and who cite them side by side with Quadi, Marcomanni, Vandals and Sarmatians in another passage. 6th century authors identified the Suvas of Galicia with the Alemanni, or simply with Germans, whilst the 4th century Laticulus Veronensis mentions some Suva side by side with Alemanni, Quadi, Marcomanni and other Germanic peoples. Additionally it has been pointed out that the lack of mention of the Suva could mean that they were not per se an older distinct ethnic group, but the result of a recent ethnogenesis with many smaller groups among them also part of the Quadi and Marcomanni coming together during the migration from the Danube Valley to the Iberian Peninsula. Other groups of Suvis are mentioned by Jordanus and other historians as residing by the Danube regions during the 5th and 6th centuries, although there is no clearly documented reason behind the migration of 406. A widely accepted theory is that the migration of the various Germanic peoples west of the Rhine is due to the westward push of the Huns during the late 4th century, the reasoning being that the activities of the Huns disrupted and threatened the existing peoples of the region forcing them to uproot. It should be noted that this theory has created controversy within the academic community because of the lack of convincing evidence. Whether displaced by the Huns or not, the Suva along with the Vandals and Alans crossed the Rhine on the night of 31 December 405. Their entrance into the Roman Empire was at a moment when the Roman West was experiencing a series of invasions and civil wars between 405 and 406. The western regions of the empire saw the invasion of Italy by Goths under Radagarasus, as well as a steady stream of usurpers. This allowed the invading barbarians to enter Gaul with little resistance, consequently allowing for the barbarians to cause considerable damage to the northern provinces of Germania Inferior, Belgica Prima, and Belgica Secunda before the empire saw them as a threat. In response to the barbarian invasion of Gaul, the usurper Constantine III halted the masses of Vandals, Alans, and Suvis, who remained confined to northern Gaul. But in the spring of 409, Gerontius led a revolt in Hispania and set up his own emperor, Maximus. Constantine, who had recently been elevated to the title of Augustus, set off to Hispania to deal with the rebellion. Gerontius responded by stirring up the barbarians in Gaul against Constantine, convincing them to mobilize again, and, in the summer of 409, the Vandals, Alans, and Suva began pushing south towards Hispania, settlement and integration. 
The civil war that erupted in the Iberian Peninsula between the forces of Constantine and Gerontius left the passes through the Pyrenees either purposely or consequently neglected, making southern Gaul and the Iberian Peninsula susceptible to barbarian attack. Hydatius documents that the crossing into the Iberian Peninsula by the Vandals, Alans, and Suva took place on either 28 September or 12 October 409. Some scholars take the two dates as the beginning and the end to the crossing of the Pyrenees mountain range into the Iberian Peninsula. Since the crossing over of such a formidable barrier by scores of thousands could not have possibly been done in a 24-hour time frame, Hydatius writes that upon entering of Hispania the barbarian peoples, and even so the same Roman soldiers, spent two years 409 to 410 in a frenzy, plundering food and goods from the cities and countryside, causing a famine in the process that, according to Hydatius, forced cannibalism amongst the locals. Driven by hunger human beings devoured human flesh, mothers too feasted upon the bodies of their own children whom they had killed and cooked with their own hands. In 411 the various barbarian groups decided on the establishment of a peace and divided the provinces of Hispania among themselves, sorta, by lot. Many scholars believe that the reference to lot may be to the sortis allotments which barbarian federates received by the Roman government, which suggests that the Suva and the other invaders were under a treaty with Maximus's government. There is, however, no concrete evidence of any treaties between the Romans and the barbarians. Hydatius never mentions any treaty, and states that the peace in 411 was brought about by the compassion of the Lord, while Orosius asserts that the kings of the Vandals, Alans and Suvis were actively pursuing a pact similar to that of the Visigoths at a later date. The division of the land between the four barbarian groups went as such. The Siling Vandals settled in Hispania by Etica. The Alans were allotted the provinces of Lusitania and Hispania Carthagin and Cis. And the Husting Vandals and the Suva shared the northwestern province of Galaresia. The division of Galicia between the Suva and the Husting Vandals placed the Suva in the western of the province, by the Atlantic Ocean shores most probably in lands now between the cities of Porto in Portugal, in the south, and Pontevedra in Galicia, in the north. Soon Braga would become their capital, later expanding themselves into Astorga, and in the region of Lugo and in the valley of the Minho River, with no evidence suggesting that the Suva inhabited any other cities in the province prior to 438. The initial relation between Galicians and Suva were not as calamitous as sometimes suggested, as Hydatius mentions, not war or conflict with the locals between 411 and 430. In the other hand, Orosius affirmed that the newcomers turned their swords into ploughs once they received their new lands. Based on some toponymical data, it has been proposed that another Germanic group accompanied the Subi and settled in Galicia, the Buri, allegedly in the region between the rivers Cavado and Home, in the area known as Terras de Boro, known in the High Middle Ages as Berio, the kingdom during the 5th century. King Homeric in 416, the Visigoths entered the Iberian Peninsula, sent by the Emperor of the West to fight off the barbarians arrived in 409. By 418, the Visigoths, led by their King Walla, had devastated both the Siling Vandals and Alans, leaving the Husting Vandals and the Suva who had remained undisturbed by Waller's campaign, as the two remaining forces in the Iberian Peninsula. In 419, after the departure of Waller to their new lands in Aquitania, a conflict aroused between the Vandals led by their King Gundric, and the Suva led by King Hermeric. Both armies met in the Battle of the Nabasius Mountains. But the intervention of Roman forces commanded by the Cums Hispania a mysterious broke off the conflict. 
attacking the Vandals and forcing them to move to Baetica, modern Andalusia, leaving the Suva as virtual possessors of the whole province. In 429, as the Vandals were preparing their departure to Africa, a Suva warlord named Harima Garius moved to Lusitania to plunder it, but was confronted by the new Vandal king Geyseric. Hirima Garius drowned in the river Guadiana while retreating. This is the first instance of an armed Subi action outside the provincial limits of Galicia. Then, after the Vandals left for Africa, the Suvis were the only barbarian entity left in Hispania. King Hermeric spent the remainder of his years solidifying Suevich rule over the entire province of Galicia. In 430 he broke the old peace maintained with the locals, sacking central Galeresha, although the barely Romanized Galicians, who were reoccupying old Iron Age hill forts, managed to force a new peace which was sealed with the interchange of prisoners. Yet new hostilities broke out in 431 and 433. In 433 King Hermeric sent a local bishop, Symphosius, as ambassador, this being the first evidence for collaboration between Suvus and locals. Anyway, it was not until 438 that an enduring peace, which would last for 20 years, was reached in the province. King Richila in 438 Hermeric became ill. Having annexed the entirety of the former Roman province of Galeresia, he made peace with the local population, and retired, leaving his son Richila as king of the Suvis. Richila saw an opportunity for expansion and began pushing to other areas of the Iberian Peninsula. In the same year he campaigned in Baetica, defeating in open battle the Romani militia Edux and Devotus by the banks of the Genial River, capturing a large treasure. A year later, in 439, the Suvus invaded Lusitania and entered into its capital, Merida, which briefly became the new capital of their kingdom. Richila continued with the expansion of the kingdom, and by 440 he fruitfully besieged and forced the surrender of a Roman official, Count Censorius, in the strategic city of Metola. Next year, in 441, the armies of Richila conquered Seville, just months after the death of the old King Hermeric, who had ruled his people for more than 30 years. With the conquest of Seville, capital of Baetica, the Suva managed to control Baetica and Carthaginensis. It has been said, however, that the Suva conquest of Baetica and Carthaginensis was limited to raids, and Suva presence, if any, was minute. In 446, the Romans dispatched to the provinces of Baetica and Carthaginensis the Magister Eutriusque Militia Evitus, who assisted by a large number of Goths, attempted to subdue the Suva and restore imperial administration in Hispania. Richila marched to meet the Romans, and after defeating the Goths, Vitus fled in disgrace. No more imperial attempts were made to retake Hispania. In 448, Richila died as a pagan, leaving the crown to his son, Richiar. King Richiar Richiar, a Catholic Christian, succeeded his father in 448, being one of the first Catholic Christian kings among the Germanic peoples and the first one to mint coins in his own name. Some believe minting the coins was a sign of Suva autonomy, due to the use of minting in the late empire as a declaration of independence, pretending to follow the successful careers of his father and his grandfather, Ricci R. made a series of bold political moves throughout his reign. The first one was his marriage to the daughter of the Gothic king Theodoric I in 448, so improving the relationship between the two peoples. He also led a number of successful plundering campaigns to Vasconia, Saragossa and Lleida. In the Hispania Tarraconans is sometimes acting in coalition with local Bagordi. In Lleida he also captured prisoners who were taken as serfs back to the Suvas lands in Galicia and Lusitania. Rome then sent ambassador to the Suvas, obtaining some conditions. 
But in 455 the Suvus plundered lands in the Carthaginensis which had been previously returned to Rome. In response, the new emperor Avitus and the Visigoths sent a conjoint embassy, remembering that the peace established with Rome was also granted by the Goths. But Rutiar launched two new campaigns on the Tarraconensis in 455 and 456, returning to Galicia with large numbers of prisoners. The Emperor Avitus finally responded to Rutiar's defiance on 456 in autumn, sending the Visigoth king Theodoric II over the Pyrenees and into Galicia, at the head of a large army of Fodorati which also included the Burgundians kings Gundioc and Hilperic. The Suva mobilized their people and both armies met on October 5 by the river Orbigo near Astorga. The Goths of Theodoric II, fighting from the right, defeated the Suva. While many Suvis were killed in the battle, and many others were captured, most managed to flee. King Rutiar fled wounded in direction to the coast, prosecuted by the Gothic army, which entered and plundered Braga on October 28. King Rutiar was captured later, in Porto, while trying to embark, being executed in December. After the execution of Rutiar, Theodoric continued his war on the Suva for three months. But in April 459 he returned to Gaul alarmed by the political and military movements of the new emperor, Majoran, and of the magister Militum Rissimus, a half-suva, maybe a kinsman of Ricciar, while his allies and the rest of the Goths sacked Astorga, Palencia and other places, on their way back to the Pyrenees competing kings when the Visigoths disposed of Rechiar. The royal bloodline of Hermeric vanished and the conventional mechanism for Suva leadership died with it. In 456, one Iolf took over the leadership of the Suvis. The origins behind Iolf's ascension are not clear. Hydatius wrote that Iolf was a goth deserter, while the historian Diodanus wrote that he was a warner appointed by Theodoric to govern Galicia, and that he was persuaded by the Suva into this adventure. Either way, he was killed in Porto in June 457 but his rebellion together with the armed actions of Majoran against the Visigoths seized the pressure on the Suva. In 456, the same year as the execution of Rechiar, Hydatius stated that the Suva set up Moldris as their king. This statement suggests that the Suva as a people may have had a voice in the selection of a new ruler. The election of Moldris would lead to a schism among the Suva, as some followed another king, named Framta, who died just a year later. Both factions then sought peace with the local Galicians. In 458 the Goths again sent an army into Hispania, which arrived in Betica in July, thereby depriving the Suvis of this province. This field army stayed in Iberia for several years. In 460 Moldris was killed, after a reign of four years during which he plundered Suvis and Romans alike, in Lusitania and in the southern extreme of Galaresia along the valley of the Douro River. Meanwhile, the Suvis in the north chose another leader, Rechimund, who plundered Galicia in 459 and 460. This same year they captured the walled city of Lugo, which was still under the authority of a Roman official. As a response, the Goths sent their army to punish the Suva who dwelt in the outskirts of the city and nearby regions. But their campaign was revealed by some locals, whom Hydatius considered traitors. From that very moment Lugo became an important centre for the Suvus, and was used as capital by Rechimund. In the south Framar succeeded Maldris and his faction, but his death in 464 closed a period of internal dissent of the Suvis, and permanent conflict with the native population. King Remusmund in 464, Remusmund, an ambassador who had travelled between Galicia and Gaul on several occasions, became king. Remusmund was able to unite the factions of Suva under his rule, and at the same time restore peace. He was also recognised, perhaps even approved of by Theodoric, who sent him gifts and weapons along with a wife.
Under the leadership of Remismund, the Suva would again raid the nearby countries, plundering the lands of Lusitania and the Conventus Asturicens. While still fighting Galician tribes like the Ornonenses, who refused to submit to Remusmund, in 468 they managed to destroy part of the walls of Conimbriga in Lusitania, which was sacked and then mostly abandoned after the inhabitants fled or were taken back to the north as slaves. Next year they even managed to capture Lisbon, which was surrendered by its leader, Lucidio. He later became ambassador of the Suva to the emperor. The end of the Chronicle of Hydatius in 468 doesn't let us know the later fate of Remusmund. The Suva probably remained mostly pagan until an Arian missionary named Ajax, sent by the Visigothic king Theodoric II at the request of the Subic unifier Remusmund converted them in 466 and established a lasting Arian church which dominated the people until their conversion to Catholicism in the 560s. The Arian period. Little is known of the period between 470 and 550, beyond the testimony of Isidore of Seville, who in the 7th century wrote that many kings reigned during this time, all of them Arians. A medieval document named Divisia Wamba mentions one king named Theodemond, otherwise unknown. Other less reliable and very posterior chronicles mention the reign of several kings under the names of Herman Eric II, Richila II and Richiar II. More trustworthy is a stone inscription found in Portugal, recording the foundation of a church by a nun, in 535, under the rule of one Veramund who is addressed as the most serene king Veramund. Although this inscription has also been attributed to King Bermudo II of Leon. Also, thanks to a letter sent by Pope Vigilius to the Bishop Profuturus of Braga circa 540, it is known that a certain number of Catholics had converted to Arianism, and that some Catholic churches had been demolished in the past in unspecified circumstances.